The painting is entitled Hope. It's the hope for the future. You see the, the figure walking on lotus, which is a symbol of purity in Vietnam. And the double fish is the sign of prosperity. It's all about happiness, prosperity, sense of well-being, and a sense of hope for the future. We as Americans know nothing about Vietnam uh, as a culture, and certainly we don't know anything about contemporary art in Vietnam. So I thought I could come and work with these artists and in some very small way, you know, be a, a little drop of water in the ocean of reconciliation between America and Vietnam. So I literally just called a moving company and said, pack me up, I'm moving to Hanoi. This is a long way from Kansas or Montana where Suzanne Leck grew up and studied art history. She came to Hanoi 20 years ago without ever having seen the place before. She did so after the unexpected death of her husband. And since then, she's created a new life for herself and an international market for contemporary Vietnamese art, a form of expression that was totally alien to post-war Vietnam. So it wasn't that this wasn't a sophisticated artistic culture. It was very sophisticated. But from 1930 to 1980, they're documenting all these wars. So then it was after the war ended, all of a sudden, there was no more wars to document. And that was really the beginning. And the Gang of Five really started that road to really contemporary art in Vietnam. After reading an article about the group of Vietnamese modern artists dubbed the Gang of Five, Suzanne made it her mission to find them and help them emerge from the shadows of government censorship and the American embargo, which made their work difficult to find and virtually impossible to sell. She managed to find one of them, Ha Tri Hu, on her first week in the country. When he went to the Fine Arts University, there he was exposed to great masters of painting from Europe. So you're seeing this kind of wonderful fusion of their Western education uh, along with their traditional folk art. It was the first generation of artists to be working in a time of peace in literally hundreds of years. So all of a sudden they weren't required to do propaganda or uh, very nationalistic works of art and they started painting their hopes and their dreams. So this initially was your gallery and then you live upstairs? Yes, yes. Her dream of opening an art gallery started in her home, a traditional country house. One of the gang of five artists helped her disassemble in the country and reconstruct above her apartment in the heart of Hanoi. This is where she would bring visitors to see and learn about the art, somewhat privately at first, before the government gradually relaxed its restrictions on public art exhibitions. Well, in the very early 90s, there were only, as far as art goes, there was a government exhibition center. And everything that is shown there, and this is still true today, you have to submit a photograph of uh, work to the Ministry of Culture to get approval. But that said, I think generally, over the years, it's become easier. The artists are pretty free to express themselves. It's just that the image of Ho Chi Minh is really not appropriate. And anything that's really negative uh, about the government, uh, you would have trouble showing today. You know, it really wasn't a problem for me because at that time, and even today, the Gang of Five, they were not doing political works. They were really doing works about the beauty of the spirit, what their hopes and dreams were. They were depicting their inner life. It wasn't, they weren't depicting anything about that reflected the, the political atmosphere. Suzanne finally opened her first public gallery in downtown Hanoi in 2002 and started to attract both local and international buyers. We've had many big collectors. Leon Black, one of the biggest collectors in America, came in on his private jet for a day and came to the gallery. I had Mick Jagger, I suppose. I think that was everybody's favorite just because he's such a, a rock star. Vietnam's economic growth has been exponential since its adoption of a market-based economy and the lifting of the U.S. trade embargo 
after diplomatic relations were restored in 1995. Luxury goods, once unfathomable here before and after the war, are an extreme symbol of the rampant consumerism sweeping the country. The local fashion and art scene has also blossomed for a new generation of Vietnamese, which has little reference to either the war or the socialist austerity of the past. So this particular work is about the social transformation of the country. Here you have uh, the nouveau rich, the advertisement of the luxury goods that are only available to a very small percentage, and the rest of Vietnam is down here. So it's this artist's depiction of the inequality of the social transformation. This is the work of Ding Thi Tampong, who's an ethnic minority artist, which, you know, the ethnic minorities are quite marginalized. So the fact that she's come to Hanoi you know, from growing up in the mountains, very poor, and gone through the art school, and become our most well-known internationally female artist is a huge achievement. I want to start by thanking Suzanne Lecht. When she offered me her gallery space, it was absolutely a dream come true. Suzanne's Art Vietnam Gallery recently featured the photography of Catherine Carno, the daughter of correspondent and historian Stanley Carno who wrote the seminal Vietnam War, A History. Every time I came back from a trip to Vietnam and shared my photographs with my father, he was astounded. When you look at a photograph, for example, of the girl dancers on the stage at a Hennessy launch in Saigon, you would never have seen anything like this just a few years ago. When I first came in the early 90s, dark, austere, very poor. Today, you see self-expression, creativity. You see the young people perhaps thinking outside the box. An explosion of not only business, but art, design. One of the many things I've loved about this exhibition is that I've noticed there's a whole new young generation of Vietnamese that are coming, that are wanting to know about their country, what happened, and also art. Just as Suzanne Lecht never had a business plan when she came to Vietnam more than 20 years ago to help kickstart the modern art business, she doesn't have an exit strategy either. I feel it's been, um, not only a very exciting, challenging, amazing journey, but I think what I've learned about life and about myself uh, has just been the most marvelous intellectual uh, exercise that I could have ever experienced. For the PBS NewsHour, Mike Saray reporting from Hanoi, Vietnam.